The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we well know that in about 30 hours from now, we will start our Christmas Eve Mass schedule. So I'm sure, especially for the little children, that their hearts are filled with anticipation and joy at the coming of Christmas. And so should ours be, even though our last week of Advent is rather truncated because of the calendar, nevertheless, we should be having that anticipation, that joyful anticipation of the coming of Christmas. So for good reason, our gospel passage today helps us to focus on what this joyful anticipation is about and how we should really celebrate Christmas, how we should prepare in these last hours to truly make Christmas a wonderful celebration. So we hear of how we have the the visitation story, the second joyful mystery. Keep in mind that the Archangel Gabriel has announced to our Blessed Mother Mary that she is full of grace, that she has been prepared from the very first moment of her life to be free of original sin, all sin, so that she could hear the message that he was going to ask, that she could say yes, I will give myself totally to God. So our Blessed Mother conceived by the Holy Spirit, and through her, Jesus Christ, true God, came into this world, becoming also true man. Moreover, Saint Joseph also has had a dream, and we would presume that the archangel involved is Gabriel, and has announced to Joseph that he's been chosen because he's a just and righteous man to be the foster father. He is to take Mary as his wife and Jesus as his own. And with that, to be the guardian of our Savior, the guardian of the Holy Family. Together they know that Elizabeth, the elderly cousin of Mary, and Zachariah, the elderly husband, have conceived a child when they thought they were too old, when they thought they were barren. Yet in God's providence, they conceived John the Baptizer, who would be that great prophet. So hearing this message, Mary and Joseph make haste. They go down to visit cousin Elizabeth. Now, none of us, I think, would hold fault with Mary and Joseph if they said, well, here we are now expecting this child, and Mary's expecting the Savior of the world. We ought to stay in Nazareth. But instead, they give of themselves they make haste. So they travel 100 miles. It'd be like traveling from here down to Richmond, except by donkey. And Mary's riding the donkey, poor Joseph's leading it. So probably about a week-long journey. So 100 miles down to Jerusalem, then five miles west to this little town of Ein Karim. And that's where Zachariah and Elizabeth live. When Mary greets Elizabeth, we hear of how there's this joyful presence Elizabeth is filled with joy. Little John the baptizer leaps for joy in the womb of his mother. So my brothers and sisters, when we look at this whole event here, we learn how 
we're supposed to spend these last few hours preparing for Christmas. First of all, we need to ponder the mystery. Throughout the Gospel, we hear of how our Blessed Mother Mary treasured these things in her heart. You and I need to treasure what we have received as a great gift, that is our faith. We need to treasure that God loves us so much that he gave us a savior. He did not abandon us to sin or to darkness. He gave us a savior. His only begotten son, Jesus, true God, became true man. Moreover, when we look at our little nativity set that'll soon be set up here before the altar, we always have to raise our eyes and see Jesus on the cross because that's why he came. Yes, he came to show us God's love, to reveal God's truth perfectly to us, but he came to die for our sins. As St. Paul recounts in our second passage, that Jesus offered that perfect sacrifice to forgive our sins, our sins, because only God could offer a sacrifice that is timeless, something that happens to us now. Moreover, that Jesus did not just come to die, he rose to give us the hope of everlasting life. So how wonderful it is to know that this is our gift of faith. No other religion has this gift. No other religion has a savior. And so we should rejoice and cherish, treasure this gift of faith and ponder the great mystery. But then with that, the next step is to really strive to make this a time when we live in the presence of our Lord. We're here at Mass for the fourth Sunday of Advent, and soon we'll be gathered for our Christmas Mass. Never forget, if we break Christmas apart, what do we have? Christ's Mass. It's always here. Christ is present among us here. This too is a great gift. Christ is present in the words of sacred scripture, not pious prose, living words. Words by which we're called to live by. If we want to know how to live life, we need to allow these words to be present in our own souls. Moreover, we have the gift of the Eucharist, that in a few moments the priest offers bread and wine by the power of the Holy Spirit, they are transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. Christ comes to dwell within our hearts. Even though there's this mysterious veil of the bread and wine still, what it is, what we receive, is really the who is Jesus. Jesus comes to dwell within our soul, just as he dwelt within the womb of our Blessed Mother. So my brothers and sisters, we can rejoice, not only because of God's word, but because of his real presence, his life shared with us. No matter what happens then, on the dark outside in which we live, perhaps, nevertheless, inside, we can know the love of Christ. But then, too, the last step is that we have to joyfully proclaim this. So Mary and Joseph proclaimed this message Elizabeth, John, Zachariah, rejoice in this message. Let's not forget during this Christmas time to rejoice and proclaim this message to others. I'm sure some of you have relatives visiting already and you've welcomed them into your home. That's wonderful. You have maybe friends coming over to enjoy some celebration. Don't forget the Merry Christmas or May God bless you on this Christmas. This is what it's about. If you do have friends over, maybe for some kind of a gathering, like I remember my parents would have a neighborhood party, there'd be like a dinner buffet, there's always time to pause to say grace, to pray. It's not just about the festivity, it's about the reason why, and that is Christ. That's what we're celebrating. So don't forget, to make Christ ever present joyfully in your own lives. Moreover, we have, I like the word moreover, do you notice that? But anyway, moreover, we have 
St. Joseph and Elizabeth making haste to see elderly cousin Elizabeth. I think I said Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary making haste to visit cousin Elizabeth. Well, they're elderly. I'm sure some of you are grandparents visiting. Maybe grandparents will be coming. For you kids especially, pay careful, close attention to your grandparents. Turn off the electronics. Listen to them. Learn from them. They're very special gifts. I only had one grandparent, my mom's mom, so grandma. The others had died before I was born. And I have many happy memories of being with my grandmother when she would come to visit. And so we can welcome these wonderful elders into our own home. But then too, maybe in the neighborhood, there's an elderly person, someone who may be alone, may have even lost a spouse this year. Don't forget them. They need to have that joy of Christ's love. I think of how yesterday my mom told me, now mom's 86, but her Aunt Margaret is 93. You might be wondering, that sounds strange. But my mom's dad was 18 when Aunt Margaret was born. Big family. So poor old Aunt Margaret is in Chicago in a nursing home. Not all together there right now. The memory goes in and out. And so it's a laborious task to try to have a conversation with Aunt Margaret. But Mom called her up, tried to reminisce about some of the good times growing up, and Aunt Margaret's mom, so my mom's grandmother, and even though it was a laborious task, brought great joy not only to my mom, but hopefully to Aunt Margaret. So think about this. Think about how you and I have to bear witness to this great gift that we celebrate each Christmas. We need to do this because you and I know we live in such a troubled world. As a nation, we're still mourning over what happened in Connecticut. And one has to wonder, how did all of this happen? Well, you and I as Christians have to bring the message of Christ back to life, not only in our own lives, but in this world. Fifty years ago, in 1962, the Supreme Court said we could no longer pray in our public schools because one person complained. So kids could no longer say the Our Father, a prayer, when we think about it, shouldn't be offensive to any religion. God, our Father. And then the next year they said, because of a complaint, kids couldn't read the Bible in school anymore. And so the Ten Commandments could not be posted. Ten Commandments that said things like, thou shalt not kill. And we used to be basic rules of life for everyone, no matter what religion. And then the Supreme Court started saying, you can't have a nativity scene by itself on public property. You can't have a memorial cross on public property, and on and on. No longer do we pray as a nation. We have these insipid moments of silence, but we don't pray. In 1944, June the 6th, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, over the radio, led the nation in prayer as our soldiers hit the D-Day invasion beaches. 10,000 soldiers died that day. But as a nation, we paused and we prayed. We don't do that anymore. And what's come about from all of this? We've removed God from our lives, and so we're no longer a nation under God, but we've made ourselves above God. No wonder the life of the unborn isn't sacred anymore, that is subject to the worst violence. No wonder our elderly are seen as expendable. We say people are now in a persistent vegetative state, so they're vegetables, so we can eliminate them. When do we say, because of health care costs, this person is too old, too sick to deserve health care? We have to save money. And then the comedians, the newscasters and so on, mock Christianity. They don't have the guts to mock Islam or Judaism, but they'll mock Christianity. Our entertainment has become so violent, when we think of it, so many of our children, for almost a generation now, have been trained to be killers through video games, and we wonder why. Why did Connecticut happen? Well, my brothers and sisters, I've had people ask me, 
Where was God? Why didn't God do something to stop that? If we've cast God off, if we've banished God from our life, why would we expect God to somehow mirac miraculously intervene and stop this killer? Let's think about this. It's time for us as Christians to live our faith, to joyfully present the gospel message to others, not to be afraid of our faith, but to live it. Just think, our little Advent wreath now is fully lit. We started with one little candle that's barely still here, but one little candle. But from that one flame, we could light the whole wreath. We could light a candle for each of us. Well, we're that one flame. We're called to be that one little light that shines through the darkness. And maybe by our way of celebrating Christmas and really living our faith each day, we'll be able to inflame this country again with the love of Christ. We'll be able to really fulfill what the prophet Micah had prophesied, that the Messiah is coming to scatter the darkness. And this is what we need to do. So in the last hours before we celebrate Christmas, take the message to heart, just as did our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, Elizabeth, Zachariah, St. John the Baptist. Take the message to heart. Ponder the gift of faith. Live in the presence of Christ and joyfully proclaim the message of Christmas. May God bless you.